Now, before we start, let me tell you briefly about, about GDN. Um, for those who don't know the Global Development Network, uh, we are an international organization headquartered in New Delhi in India, uh, but we work across the globe. We were born uh, um, two decades ago with one ambitious vision to promote the importance of research capacity in social sciences in development, for development, but also more simply as uh, development. Let me take only a few minutes before we turn to an excellent group of speakers to tell you where the idea of this panel um, came from. In fact, this panel is named after a program at GDN. The program is actually called Doing Research. And all the speakers today are researchers that work with us um, as part of this program in their respective countries. Um, the Doing Research program partners with research donors and with local research institutions to generate evidence on national research systems and their evolution. It is a comparative, multi-country effort built around a common analytical framework that aims to describe and analyze research systems and their evolution, specifically in developing countries and specifically with regard to social science research. Ultimately, we want to identify levers of change based on the best possible evidence. This is an area on which we still know very little, unfortunately, and the implication, uh, the implication of not knowing much about research systems in developing countries is that we often do not know to what extent supporting research in developing countries strengthens research systems and their performance. Simply put, it means that we often do not know if and how supporting research translates in support for development. In a historical moment like the one we are living through, which is showing the inherent limitations of scientific endeavor as much as the often uh, uh, unsure or, or even misplaced public and private expectations towards science as a pipeline to provide solutions. Um, in a moment like this, I think understanding how social research works um, is more key than ever. Three important things I would like you to know about this initiative. Um, we focus, the Doing Research Programme focuses on national research systems because the range of opportunities and challenges social sciences face, whether in terms of quality, equity, or access to resources or access to influence, even when regionally or globally connected, are defined by what happens within national boundaries. We define a research system as the interplay of three functions, uh, the production, the diffusion, and the outtake of social uh, research. And we see the doing, research, uh, the doing research assessment, which are the reports we produce on, on the national reports we produce on the state of uh, social sciences, um, as a starting point for building research agendas and stimulating debates on research policy that can only be led by a local research institution. Hence our choice to have local PIs to connect them across countries in a network. Today's panel is a microcosm of this network that the Global Development Network is, uh, is, is trying to, to build through the Dewey Research Program. Just a few words about think tanks now. Um, think tanks are obviously an important part of um, this larger system of uh, production, diffusion and uptake um, of research-based knowledge, typically but not always um, or necessarily rightly in, in opposition to universities, uh, the, the knowledge uh, institution by definition. Uh, at the country level. Arguably, however, the word think tank is often a vague reference, a catch or label that encompasses a very wide range of organizations operating at different ends of the production, diffusion, uptake spectrum and at different levels uh, in a research system with perhaps the shared but generic expectation that they would produce independently policy relevant research. This makes the question of what think tanks look like and how they operate and why in specific countries a particularly enticing one. Today's panel will be exploring these questions. So what do think tanks look like? What do they do and how they do it and why in three countries across three continents? Um, and we'll be talking about their place in the research system. The countries we are talking about today are Bolivia, Myanmar um, and Nigeria. We have an amazing set of speakers um, today. Rather than introducing everyone individually right away, I propose to, um, to do so before they speak in order to jump into the, um, the, thick, of, of the thick of it uh, of, uh, and the questions that we have today um, for you. Um, the first question I have today is about the overall think tank sector. 
um, in your respective um, countries. Um, and, and it is the following. Can you first define the boundaries of think tanks in your country vis-a-vis -vis other research producers and communicators? What kind of roles do they play and what kind of research do they focus on? Um, and I propose that we start with, um, with Sharim uh, Ribeira, um, who's a research associate at the Center for the Studies of Social and Economic Realities in Bolivia, um, who's currently part of the, uh, of the leading team for the two research assessment um, in, in Bolivia. Uh, we'll move on then to Myanmar and, and, and Nigeria, and I'll mix up countries in, in the following question. So, Sharim. Tell us a bit more about what are the boundaries of the thing, of think tanks um, in your countries and uh, what roles do they play? Sure. Um, good morning, uh, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us here. It's, it's an incredible group to be a part of, and it's a great event to be a part of uh, these days. Um, regarding the question, uh, we think in Bolivia the think tank concept kind of uh, includes a broader, uh, a broader discussion because think tanks are considered uh, above all research institutions, but are also known as applied research centers or public policy research institutes. So they are mostly non-government organizations and private organizations. Uh, both non-profit and for-profit, but uh, their main characteristic is that they are oriented to research. And uh, by doing that, they promote evidence-based um, knowledge in order to overcome any obstacles towards uh, sustainable socioeconomic development. Um, in our country, based on their characteristics and their structure, uh, think tanks can be, for example, private research centers that were first created created as consultancy. They can be academic centers. They can be even um, advocacy organizations that represent or uh, are created in defense of social demands. But it is worth mentioning that whatever the category, the category uh, these are not mutually exclusive. So think tanks may present characteristics corresponding to more or uh, more than one uh, types uh, of the ones that I mentioned before. Um, regarding the role that they play um, or their mission as, as this type of institutions, um, they're considered to play a very important role, um, um, like uh, uh, other research producers and communicators, uh, due to their experience and mainly the depth of the research work. Um, so they're very specialized in their area of work. So in this framework, their main function is uh, to mainly promote uh, issues for incorporation in the public agenda or prepare diagnoses or proposals in the field of public policy in order to mainly influence decision uh, making uh, contexts or spheres. Uh, as we have confirmed when reaching out to some institutions that were part of the DRA uh, assessment within this policy process, um, think tanks may play different roles in different stages. And these roles can vary from, for example, advocating for the adoption of certain policies or mainly monitoring the implementation of policies, evaluating uh, programs, uh, impact of policies, and they can go all the way to setting the policy agenda, which is the case of our unit for analysis of social and economic policies in, in Bolivia. This is the government think tank and it's mainly a public institution that carries out applied research and provides technical support to the executive branch um, by analyzing or evaluating economic and social policies. So um, these organizations may uh, or have been producing knowledge and evidence on, topic mainly, on topics mainly related to development, employment, poverty, inequality, and uh, mainly an analysis of the regions in terms of economic growth. So they analyze issues related to also the electoral political debate, for example, um, democracy, basic social needs, social services, health, education, um, and everything on a macro and micro economic level. So that's basically uh, where think tanks stand here in Bolivia. 
Okay, thank, thank, thanks a lot, Sharon. So very, very kind of encompassing, uh, a lot of different roles, um, uh, I feel. Now let's move on to, to, um, to Myanmar. Uh, for a second. Um, and we have Nu Wawin, who's senior, senior policy coordinator at the Center for Economic and Social Development, CSD, um, in Yangon, and of course was, was a leading member of the DRA, of the Doing Research Assessment uh, uh, team in, in Myanmar. Um, Noa, off to you. What you know? How would you define the boundaries of the think tank sector in in um, in, 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 in Myanmar, um, and what roles do they play? Thank you, thank you, Francesco, um, and uh, uh, good good morning, good afternoon, and good you know evening, depends on your location. Um, uh, to answer your questions, um, think tanks in Myanmar are still very young stage, and there were a few think tanks emerging in 2012 after the country uh, went through reforms and liberalizations. So some of them disappear within a few years. And uh, the next generations of think tanks emerge uh, after a very uh, popular government was elected in uh, 2016. And uh, also uh, thanks to IDRC support for think tank initiative in Myanmar. Uh, majority of the think tanks are dependent on the external funding. Uh, so they engage on the issues interested by the uh, international donors, uh, such as peace, conflict, uh, governance, and human rights. Uh, there are a few think tanks working on socioeconomic issues of the country. Uh, uh, UN agency, international NGOs, consultancy firms, and foreign experts, they dominate in the this area, this field, in the name of uh, technical assistance, all right? Uh, so the, the role that local think tanks play uh, are, uh, they are regarded as technically not to do policy, technically not strong to do policy research. So they have to engage as a subcontractors to collect data, translate official documents, and interpret in meetings. Uh, so that's uh, uh, where local organizations, you know, stand right now uh, in Myanmar. Thank you. Oh, just, just, just a quick follow-up question, like uh, compared to, to, to other actors, um, mm -hmm. do they, did they carve, did think tanks, you feel, is there a clear role that think tanks carved out? Because, you know, if you mentioned the first ones were, were born, of course, in, in 2012, um, I mean, uh, in this few years, you know, basically eight years that pass, you know, is there, is there a clear sector emerging with a specific role um, or, or, um, or not yet? Can, can, can you say it again? I mean, after eight years, do you feel like, you, you, could you talk of a, of a think tank sector in, in the country? Or are we mm -hmm. still talking about few institutions which are uh, particularly, you know, very, very different, have their own um, features and, and, and uniqueness? Is there, is there a sector? Would you would you say there's a sector in Myanmar? I think the sector in Myanmar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's a fast uh, fast growth um, for um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for a sector. Okay. Let, let's um, thank thank you very much, Noah. Let's move a little, you know, to 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 Nigeria. Um, we have uh, from Nigeria. We have uh, two. Um, to, to researchers from the team. Um, the first, uh, first uh, Adedayo um, Olofinium, please correct my pronunciation. I always call you by my first name, <laughs> apologies. Uh, he's a senior researcher at the National Center for Technology um, Management, NASATEM. Um, and of course, he's a member of the, of the Do Research Assessment Team that carried out um, the study in the last um, 18 months. Um, after you, Adedayo, uh, tell us a bit about the, um, the boundaries of the sector and, and uh, what role think tanks are perceived to play in Nigeria. Okay, thank you, Francesco, for having us. Uh, it's good afternoon from here. And um, by the way, my name is Ade Dayo, or Love Me Yehu. But like you said, you don't have to worry about my son name. <laughs> okay, so to the question about the boundary and the role of think tanks in Nigeria. First, I would say that that term think tank 
can refer to about three different um, category of organizations. The first are research institutes. Research institutes are publicly owned. You know, they, 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 they function under government ministries and they do social science research and they can qualify as think tanks. But in Nigeria, we don't call them think tanks. We call them research institutes. The second category are private consultancies. Um, private consultancies don't only do social science research. They do so many other things. They, some of them even produce products, but they also do serious social science research. But we don't call them think tanks, you know, strictly speaking. We call them private consultancies. The third category, which strictly are referred to as think tanks, are think tanks. <laughs> so think tanks, um and they are basically for profit they are private owned they are out there to 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 make profits and they do social science research those are the ones strictly speaking referred to as think tanks in our context then because they are for profit and they are privately owned they do research only in response to contractual requests from their clients so it's a, it's a business thing, even though their research is very quality, but it is you know, sort of a business stuff. They get requests for research from their clients and their clients could be politicians, especially politicians most of the times, sometimes government, sometimes donors, sometimes businesses. Um, and it is these clients who pay for the research. So think tanks basically just get demand to do a particular research on you know, particular topics could be they cover all the sort of things democracy employment education climate change environment name it um and they also produce they produce research they are active in disseminating research results and they also go to the point of employment and businesses to pick up the evidence they've produced for policy and for practice. Um, their overall focus is highly dependent on the prevailing political atmosphere. So because it is it's private, it's for profit. So it's donors and their clients reach out to them based on what is currently in vogue, what is currently the need of the of of the economy for instance there was a time when nigeria was talking about moving from uh what do you call this moving to democracy moving from a military route to to democratic crew that was the end thing in the country at that time and that that was exactly what these think tanks were focusing on because that's where the money is and that's where client wanted evidence so let me summarize everything I've said. Think tanks could, we could refer to three different categories of organizations as think tanks, but it's, it is the for-profit one that is strictly referred to as think tanks in our context. And they do research in response to contractual demand from their clients who could be government, politicians, donors, and business owners. And their focus is determined by the prevailing uh, political, economic atmosphere in the country. So. In, 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 in the case of Nigeria, that's what we have about think tanks. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Adedayo. Uh, a lot of interesting uh, stuff already coming up about uh, who, who, who sets the agenda uh, ultimately and, and, and who think tanks basically um, support, you know, who, who do they serve as, as, as clients. Uh, so let's now like jump into the, the whole debate about about the last few months, uh, this uh, global pandemic, and uh, of course the COVID COVID nineteen, um, and and the idea here is to talk about you know social research in each one of your countries, looking specifically at the role um, at, at, at the role also of think tanks. But first, let, let's uh, let's continue with Nigeria, and we have um, Abiodun Egbe Dokun, uh, who is assistant director of research um, of, of the research department at the National Center for Technology and management, and as a term, of course, a, a close colleague, um, even I think we can say the boss of, uh, <laughs> of, of Adedayo, they work very closely together. Uh, um, 
Of course, and, and then is the PI yes. for, for, for the study, the, the research assistant um, on, on Nigeria. So, um, Abdul, um, you know, what, what would, you know, would you say there is a research agenda taking shape around COVID in Nigeria at the moment? Um, and what are the top three questions that, that are being asked? Um, and most importantly, who is asking, who is setting the questions um, on, on, in the social research space about, about the current um, pandemic? Uh, yes, thank you, Francesco, and um, thanks for having me. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Um, so uh, to address the question specifically, uh, there is indeed uh, a huge body of research now emerging around COVID-19. Uh, this basically makes Nigeria not to be an exception among the committee of nations at the moment, because basically on top of the social science research agenda across the globe now, there is a huge demand for not just evidence, as it were, but high quality evidence that is immediately applicable. So in that sense, Nigeria is not an exception. There's a huge body of research that is emerging at the moment. Um, this research is driven by several questions. I mean, there is research that is immediately applicable. There, there are those that will only be useful in the medium term, and there are those that will only be useful in the long term. But right now, top of the agenda, on top of the agenda, there are questions that are immediately applicable. And the top three, um, I mean, and this is based on our own quick systematic assessment of the social science research landscape and interaction with some of the critical stakeholders, not just in the social science research landscape, but also across the entire research landscape in Nigeria. The, the top three questions are in relate that the first one is in relation to the economic impact of the pandemic. So basically, how does the, uh, the pandemic affect businesses? How does it affect households? particularly in terms of income and job losses. And it's quite logical, you know, because basically the primary concern at the moment is how do we ensure that people do not lose their livelihood when the pandemic is gone. And tied into this is a broad, uh, a huge body of research now beginning to emerge around is issues of um, inequality. So inequality in the sense that, you know, we're beginning to arrive at the new normal where face-to-face -face meetings and interactions, physical appearances in offices and in workspaces are becoming considerably more difficult than they used to be. So um, the, 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 the uh, adjustment to this new normal has the potential to deepen existing inequalities. Because for instance, people without skills, relevant ICT skills and infrastructure may find it really difficult to function, let alone compete in the in the post-COVID or, or in the COVID world. So that's that's the, the top one of the top questions. And secondly, there is the impact of the pandemic on the vulnerable population. So women, uh, uh, the aged, children, and quite recently in Nigeria, we started having a huge uh, population of internally displaced persons. So people who have been displaced from their center of life, largely because of insurgencies, the Boko Haram insurgency in the north, other kinds of uh, crisis all over the place. So when people have been uprooted from their primary center of life, they, there's the potential that they are left behind. So this pandemic could have a disproportionate level of impact upon them. So there is research emerging around that as well. taking shape and then finally there's a uh, among the top three questions there is so much research imagine around how households and individuals are coping with the effects of the pandemic not only economically but also structurally in terms of what kind of skills are developing how is the school system responding for instance through virtual learning what is the level they are having to virtual learning vary across uh, the income brackets across board. And generally, these questions the, is, is being there.
workmanship largely by demand from government. Okay, I, I don't know if it was just me, but the last, I'm kind of missing a few words. I think the connection was a problem with the connection. I see, I see to, to give an illustrative uh, example, very recently, the Nigerian government decided to that, sure. Have you done? Ah. I, I think, no, but there's a connectivity issue. And I oh, think, okay. Uh, so can you hear me clearly now? Just me. So Is it better now? With your connection. So we, 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 I think we lost the last uh, couple of sentences of, um, um, of yours. Uh, so of course we're talking about inequality, mm -hmm. schools, etc. But uh, what, what came after that, the reference to government, uh, I think uh, I missed. Oh, okay. So if you could just repeat that, I continue. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can I can take that again. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? Right. Okay. Good. So I was saying that the research agenda is largely shaped by the government based on demand from government. So I was given an illustrative example of when the government recently decided that they wanted to cut costs, the cost of governance. And so um, questions started coming from the social science research circles about how best to do this to ensure that we don't worsen the problem by kicking people out of their jobs and things like that. And so um, there's also a huge role being played by researchers in shaping the research agenda that is emerging. So to summarize, there's, there's um, a rapidly emerging body of research surrounding issues of uh, COVID-19 in the social science research uh, uh, lot, space and also um, beyond that. Oh, interesting stuff there. Uh, particularly in terms of the role of government in shaping in shaping the the research agenda, uh, would you say that actually the government is commissioning research to think tanks? Is that what's happening a lot? Uh, well, yes. Going by the definition that Adedayo gave earlier, that the the think tank uh, structure in Nigeria is literally divided neatly into two: the for profit and the uh, the research institutes that are subsumed on the government. So in that sense, there's a lot of commissioning going to uh, the research institutes at the moment. So for instance, at NASATEM, we recently contributed to an economic recovery plan of the government on the basis of a specific request that came to us okay. from the yeah. government through the Thanks. Federal Thanks. Ministry Thanks. of Science. Was, uh, and very, very so clear. this is going uh, on in lot Sorry for the, the, the problem with the connection. Um, um, now I'd like to move back to um, in fact, um, Noir, are, are you still with us? I am. Yes, yes. Am. So, yeah. uh, what what is the is there, is there a research agenda shaping uh, around COVID uh, in, in Myanmar? What are the key questions, and we ask who is asking them? All right. So, are also think tanks kind of contributing to this um, or not? The floor yeah. is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, in in Myanmar. Uh, after the pandemic, the private sector is uh, taking strong interest in promoting research related to COVID-19 impacts. So uh, we had a government plan for the economy. Uh, uh, for instance, they spent about 0.1% uh, uh, of GDP to lend money to the business and SMEs. Uh, however, the private sector was not satisfied uh, with the government response and they start undertaking business surveys and impact assessment by the, themselves to uh, inform and advocate to the government. So right now we are helping to the private sector uh, to come up uh, uh, with the objective and credible evidence to inform the government to come up with a better response uh, and uh, uh, you know mitigate, mitigating plans and also for the recovery plan. Uh, uh, recovery plan. So uh, uh, at the same time, uh, some international donors are also taking a strong interest in helping our populations uh, under COVID-19. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, EU donated Euro 5 million uh, to help retain female workers in the garment industry. Uh, garment industry is the, uh, you know, seriously hit because of the uh, COVID pandemic. So EU stepped in and you know assist to that uh, area. So as a result, uh, we are helping the industry to make assessment about how COVID-19 uh, is affecting uh, women workers and how their dependent families are coping uh, 
uh, under the COVID-19. Uh, with the support, we are also developing a research agenda uh, to link short-term uh, immediate impacts of, of crisis to long-term reform measures that the government can address the need of uh, these workers. So we approached the um, uh, Social Security Board of the Ministry of Labor to support their planning for strengthening Social Security coverage uh, to the vulnerable workers. Um, we also got a lot uh, of requests from the media and some other uh, ad groups to uh, participate in policy debates and you know advocate to all stakeholders based on the uh, uh, evidence-based uh, research. Um, thank you. Thank you, Noah. Um, thanks for this kind of insight into what CSD has, has been, I know, extremely busy with in the in the past in the past um, months. Um, when you when you mentioned that the government is, is very interested in commissioning research, I mean, do you think? Uh, of course, I, I suppose this is through your own personal experience as a, as a think tank. Um, do you see this happening at, at the level of? beyond much beyond um csd with other think tanks etc um or, or do you think it's um uh, so is this kind of a resurgence of interest on the government side uh, for for commissioning research um uh, to, to independent uh, uh, organizations um or is this in line with what happened in the past it's just the topic is is, uh, is more urgent so, uh, uh, you know, to be specific, uh, government requests um, uh, our center to help in the impact in agricultural sector and how, um, you know, they can, um, uh, you know, mitigate the situations and uh, how they can, you know, uh, um, you know, assist to the agricultural sector uh, and also fishery sector. So based on the you know research we have done in the past, and then you know uh, quickly look at the current situations, uh, we you know put support uh, to the government, um, not only for the mitigation and you know um, recovery plan, uh, not only to the government and also through the uh, uh, you know uh, we also got requests from the parliament to you know debrief and explain them uh, the situation for them to understand well for the you know recovery plan and we also got requests from the private sector based on our you know previous research so it's a uh, uh, we because of you know the research that we have done in the past we can you know at this time we can quickly look at this um, situation and support to the government okay, and also to the yeah Thank you, thank you, Noah. Let's go back to Bolivia for a second, Sharon. Um, is there a research agenda with social sciences taking shape in Bolivia, and who is who is leading it, and what are the questions that are being asked? Um, I think one of our main conclusions from the DRA project has been uh, the absence of a consolidated research system in Bolivia. So. I would say um, it is no surprise that the reaction to COVID is now is not being generated as a shared national research agenda, but mainly um, it's uh, um, generated through the initiatives of private institutions like think tanks, like other research centers uh, that have uh, picked up interest in uh, around COVID-19. And they're mostly isolated efforts. So, um, for example, out of the people that we reached out to specifically for this um, subject, uh, a great majority has confirmed that, yes, there is a current research agenda taking shape around COVID-19, but it, within their institutions. Um, and it's uh, carried out whether by generating new projects or adapting ongoing projects. So that was uh, that was interesting to see how how these are um, how research is evolving and trying to adapt to the current situations and current context. Um, 
but this uh, this is uh, being generated in response to demands by the government, by the private sector, that are that I think are focusing on um, the before, during, and after uh, context of this whole pandemic. So um, that is how to face this crisis now, but also look at how the economy was before in terms of health and services to, uh, like the infrastructure to, to overcome this crisis, identify what were the weaknesses, what were the strengths um, and how, how to look forward based on that. How can some sectors can reactivate in, up, in upcoming months? Because uh, right now, we know that economic growth might be negative, unemployment will increase, so will poverty, of course, and especially um, small businesses uh, uh, are more prone to start failing. So they have little chance of reactivating because they may not be reached by the government's measures. Um, the government has applied a series of, uh, of relief measures uh, regarding to payment of services, reprogramming credits, uh, access to new credits, postponing the payments of, of taxes for businesses, for example, and all around a plan to reactivate the economy um, based on the public uh, investment that will be required in this post-COVID uh, stage. So I think uh, from what we were able to extract uh, from the perception of the institutions that we reached out to, um, there are three matters of discussion. The top three uh, are mainly around the evaluation of the economic impact of the pandemic, um, the response of the political instances and organizations um, facing the expansion of this pandemic, and mainly the effects of social prevention measures. Um, but even though uh, the majority was focused on these questions, other types of questions were being raised around challenges of the healthcare system, institutional capacity, resilience, local economic reactivation plans, uh, social distancing, uh, and the whole interaction between uh, the people in our society, democracy, food security. I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot emphasize how, how this crisis has opened a whole, uh, a whole new series of, uh, of research topics that, are somehow, that have somehow become priority in, in the country. So, like uh, like Abby Adun mentioned, um, private research institutions are now um, being are now carrying out work around this these topics and are trying to generate or feed the debate of these issues uh, related to the pandemic. Um, our own institutions, Ceres, Inesad, uh, the Society of Economists, for example have um, ongoing virtual conferences, um, vir everything's virtual, <laughs> but virtual events around, for example, um, dismissal of workers, um, situation of public health workers. And um, just last week, CERES uh, organized a conference around the, the theme of global, um, the global epidemiological crisis, uh, so I think there's a lot of interest going on, not, not, um, not an agenda aligned between all actors of the social research system, but definitely um, yeah, on, 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 on each of their ends. Because you know it's a bit in line with the other um, what um, Abidun uh, and um, and uh, and what told us about you know a lot of questions being asked, uh, uh, not necessarily a coherent or cohesive or. Uh, uh, agenda crafted by a single uh, source, um, the, the single body, um, but again, a very strong demand uh, for research, it would seem. Uh, yes, a strong right. demand for, for, for evidence, which has, which you know, risen for optimism, of course, if, if, uh, if the moment there is a demand, then, then um, 
you know, decision makers and, and, and policy actors know where to go uh, to, to find to find evidence. So uh, perhaps an opportunity. Um, and which leads me to uh, the third question I wanted to ask all of our panelists um, today. Of course, we talked about the, the, what the think tanks, uh, what think tanks look like at, at, the, at the country level. Um, uh, we, we looked at uh, what the, whether there is an agenda uh, taking shape around COVID uh, at the country level. Now the question is whether, uh, for example, this demand uh, for evidence and for research um, and the current engagement of think tanks at the, at the country level in, in these debates uh, can help us, you know, tell us something about the state of the think tank sector, yeah, and at the uh, at the country level. So how has the response, um, how has the, 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 the this last few months of, of crisis and response to the crisis affected think tanks, uh, of course, in their position in the research system? Do think tanks come out strengthened of this or do they come out basically weakened? Um, and did the crisis highlight any specific challenge uh, to the way think tanks operate, the capacity to set uh, their agenda um, and the dependence on specific sources um, of funding or, or, or specific kind of um, yeah, actors on, on the demand side? So what can we learn from the past few months? Obviously, the, the big question is long term, it's not short term. Right. Uh, so long term, we, we, we all want to know what will happen to the funding to research, of course, the funding to, to independent research and to think that specifically. Um, but what is it that we can learn from the from the short term, from what we've been able to observe in the past few months about about the place that think tanks occupy within the national research system? I think this is my first question for our panelists, and I propose we continue with with um, with Sharim um, and with Bolivia, then we move on to, to Myanmar. Uh, and, and Nigeria before we open to to question from 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 the audience. Just a quick reminder, sorry, uh, Sharim, that you can ask questions that we posted in the chat. The um, the link to to the place where you can ask um, questions uh, to the panelists um, or uh, ask for clarifications. And there are also a few polls that we are um, that we are running on, on on Slido. So the link again is in the chat. Off to you, Sharon. What have we learned about the place of think tanks uh, in the research system in the past few months? Um, I think um, they've all agreed that the main role of, uh, of think tanks in this pandemic, in the response to this pandemic, has been um, um, going around the validation or contextualization of the evidence um, to pass it on to the public. Um, and even though there isn't a direct uh, interaction with government um, institutions, for example, for a great majority of think tanks, um, they still generate evidence that may be able to support um, further uh, policy formulation. Um, they, uh, they, they carry out this work of monitoring and analyzing pandemic response policies that may be of use uh, for upcoming months in the short term or long term uh, for for government um, for government agencies. So I think that is the main uh, role that they are playing right now, uh, generating evidence, but also um, taking that evidence and passing it on to the to the public um, in in a relevant uh, way. <laughs> um, but some of the challenges that have um, that have been mentioned um, are around um, how how they how they seem to be affected on the way of carrying out their research activities, and uh, this mainly comes up in terms of communication, how to deal with remote work, and how can, how this whole pandemic has been like a quick reminder of how how many institutions need a compulsory or rather accelerated learning of ICTs, for example, no? Because um, information and communication technologies have become, I would say, the modern tools of knowledge sharing. And this has become quite clear in this past months. Um, so we're looking at the internet, at computers, mobile technologies, and here, uh, I think we mainly highlight the key role that technology plays in this pandemic. So um, institutions have identified the need to support initiatives that promote access to technological infrastructure, 
training opportunities, um, online learning, mobile learning, online banking, mobile banking, uh, everything that can broaden and um, the affordability um, of uh, institutions to access these technologies. Um, I would say that they, another thing that they have found challenging is um, the administrative and financial terms uh, on their institutions regarding to funding and regarding to all the delays that this has um, that this has caused funding in the sense that um, they they seem to think that uh, the, the the funding landscape will somehow shift majorly to COVID nineteen um, topics, which is good, uh, but it might um, carry along some limiting funding to other research areas that have been ongoing for the past years within these institutions. Uh, and delays, um, well, they were anticipated mainly in areas regarding data collection, field work, uh, publication process, dissemination process, um, that may seem kind of inevitable, uh, but mm, not necessarily negative. Uh, because uh, this, well, one optimistic way to see it is that this delay may may tr may provide some increased time to refocus their research or to adapt, like we've seen in previous question, to adapt their ongoing research to this to these conditions. So while COVID nineteen has brought several challenges to the research system in developing countries, I think it also presents several opportunities to revitalize the role of various actors and players, think tanks among, among this. Um, so we reach out to several institutions regarding the potential opportunities that they, they see um, uh, can lead to adapt and to carry on, carry on with their work. And the interesting thing is that they see a potential opportunity in the use of wider communication and dissemination platforms, um, and mainly the exchange with research networks, both on a national and an international level, like we're doing right now. So um, we believe that there's a capacity to establish an agenda. Um, there are better conditions that in the past to develop these initiatives. And more importantly, there's the openness proposed by the transitional government, international cooperation to promote these initiatives. Um, however, I, I'm sorry, I'm just no, finishing no. up. <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking, it's, it seems like a great opportunity, basically, for think tanks, the, the, the current It is, it world. is. Particularly but, in Bolivia with this transition, the political transition you're going through. Definitely, yes. Uh, I think this is a great moment, but still we want to highlight the, necess like the need to establish basis of articulation between the public sector and the private sector and civil society organizations. Um, because I, we believe that the generation of this spaces of interaction for debate and participation uh, will help create higher quality public policies. Um, and I think in, in our context where there are huge resource restrictions um, and there is a, a high level, a high percentage of the population in situation of social vulnerability around COVID-19. I think increasing the, effective, the effectiveness and efficiency in the use of funds, um, I think will be key. And I think think tanks may have an important role on this. Thanks, thanks a lot, Sharon. I think this is uh, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, let's move back to Myanmar, Nuwa. Um, what have we learned about think tanks and their role in, in generating evidence at the national level through the past um, few months? Um, tell us a bit more uh, about um, what's happening in Yangon. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, during the pandemic, uh, you know, the pandemic uh, is moving local think tank into the crisis too and uh, uh, they have to offer research and survey as much as they can because like as I said you know uh, earlier 
do can think and also got you know a lot of requests from government and also parliament and mostly from the you know most of the requests that we got are from the uh, private sectors so most of us are doing it without much resources and uh, some of the issues are also not uh, from uh, but um, uh, most of the local think tanks are doing their best to, you know, assist and help the pandemic that we are facing uh, now. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, since April, some local think tanks are writing up policy analyses and inputs uh, for the government and also for the private sector. And uh, uh, for us, we are participating for this, you know, analysis and write-ups. And we also had a, a three volumes of uh, work with the Institute of uh, Strategic Policy uh, in Myanmar. So, um, uh, Francesco, if you allow me, uh, I will, you know, also request Saul to give comments on this. I'm, I'm sure that he has something uh, to add. Uh, hi, hi, Francesco. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you, um, Francesco. Um, yeah, um, so I was saying. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was mentioning. Give us your 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 insights about what what happened. Okay, I think you, your 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 sound is muted again, Francesco. Okay. So um, uh, may, may, maybe I will just go ahead. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I, I was wondering if you could give us uh, your insights about w what happened to think tanks in the last, past three months. You know, could yeah. you could you yeah. could you see any any significant change in the, in the way organizations kind of mobilized and were mobilized? Well, uh, it, you know, the crisis did really um, you know change the role of the local think tanks. You know, as Nguwa has been saying that we have to pick up. Uh, you know, the, the vacuum and then try to really fill in quickly, uh, mainly because, you know, um, in, in our case, uh, as you may know, uh, we, you know, our, you know, the policy research and also the technical assistance um, areas, I think um, most of the international organizations, foreign NGOs, and also the experts really dominate the fee. So when the crisis happened, uh, most of these expatriate experts also have to return back to their home countries. And then so many of the international organizations and the UN agencies are not really walking up to the post that they need to quickly respond to the crisis. So in a way, uh, it really pushes us uh, to the forefront of uh, debates and also offering some uh, insights and, uh, you know, the feedback to the government. Uh, on the other hand, I think it is also uh, quite challenging because uh, when we don't have our partners on the ground, it is also very difficult to manage some of the ongoing projects because uh, many of our research projects, which are jointly uh, supported and also managed by some uh, international organizations. We also have to postpone some of these activities because, you know, uh, usually they were jointly undertaking and then nowadays we have to wait for uh, for their return. So in, in a way, I think um, this is also happening in many of the, um, the, the policy projects that uh, international organizations are also working with the, the government ministries. So in a way, I think uh, this is something the international donor community should also, you know, start recognizing the proper role of the local think tanks and try to trust and empower them so that we can really, uh, you know, provide the, 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 the services during the emergency situation like this. 
in a, in a way, you know, the COVID-19 is also, uh, you know, quite unknown to, to many of us, you know, it's um, not necessarily something uh, that uh, uh, expert can claim authority on the issue, you know, so in a way, I think this is where the local expertise, local knowledge, and, you know, the, the local think tanks can better play a, a frontline position and try to offer a kind of a much needed assistance to the government. Um, this so is, in terms of, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the, uh, the financial situations that we are in, you know, is it, it is true that um, um, there are many uh, humanitarian uh, type of assistance are flowing into the country. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, our own government resources and the resources in the private sector that uh, may have somehow supported the think tank community is also drying up. So I think this is where we have to be very careful about uh, managing our finances uh, during this crisis. So I think this is uh, one key area. I, I, I think uh, we all share the same concerns. Back to you. So this is, this is very interesting because one of the findings on your uh, doing research assessment in Myanmar is that uh, the reliance on on um, international researchers flying in to conduct research for international donors is is really a, a big limit to, to investment in local research capacity building. So basically, COVID got rid of one of the problems that you had in a way by 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 repatriating uh, everybody was just in for for a short term consultancy assignment, uh, and and now the, the TOR is on your uh, is, is on your desk, which is interesting. It changed changed the landscape then quite quite significantly, and and so the, it did. I think in. Uh, in, in, in Bolivia, where we heard that you know um, it, it's, it's become an opportunity almost to to to, to do research. Uh, now let's go back to to Nigeria uh, and Abiodun. Um, what do you think has happened? And let me just ask everyone who's on the panel to just to switch on the the, the videos uh, so we actually see 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 each other and um, okay. also it's also better for the recording. Switch on. Um, oh. Yeah. Yes. Um, Abiodun, floor is yours. What have we learned about? What has happened to the sector in the last three months? You know, did we learn something specific about the, the role of think tanks or, or, or the, the contribution of a place in the system? Uh, yes, thank you, Francesco. Um, well, much of what Sharim said earlier applies to the Nigerian think tank sector as well. But um, so I, would, I won't bother to repeat all of that. Uh, um, I, mean, I will just summarize by saying that it's a mix up of um, a change in the kind of roles that think tanks can now play in the in the post-pandemic world and also in the pandemic world as we as we are coping with it at the moment. There are challenges, there are opportunities. So specifically in Nigeria, it's kind of um, interesting that uh, because we have a fairly large representation of some international organizations in the for-profit think tank sector. So for example, uh, some numerates that play in, in the local uh, for-profit think tank space. So they, they play roles not only in terms of uh, providing research evidence, generating research evidence and using existing research evidence. Some of them actually you know, have increased their corporate social responsibility. So in terms of making donations to government or giving palliatives at the at the grassroots. So uh, this is something that they were doing before, but clearly not on the same scale as they are doing it now in the world where we are dealing with uh, COVID. So in addition to their research responsibilities, this, this is uh, becoming a bigger portion of their responsibility. And of course, a huge, uh, a bigger level of advocacy is going on now, particularly from the for-profit think tank sector. So things about social distancing, how to respond at individual level, at household level, capacity building for coping with um, the world of work in, 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 the, in, in the pandemic uh, context. Um, specifically in terms of research, what we're seeing now is coming mostly out of the for-profit think tank sector. In Nigeria, there's uh, a large number of reports beginning to emerge, uh, some publications, fresh data beginning to emerge 
in, um, in relation to how to formulate policies, how to shape government responses to the pandemic. Uh, but um, quite interestingly, as Adida you mentioned in the opening, um, the think tank sector in Nigeria is uh, very, very malleable in a sense to the prevailing uh, political and economic atmosphere. So in the days of the military rule, there was a lot of research, a lot of think tanks that emerged, many of them very small, that emerged, you know, to do research around the virtues of democracy, the, so to say, these virtues of um, <laughs> totalitarianism and authoritarianism that many military regimes represent. But so when we shifted to democracy in 1999, many of these small think tanks, their funding disappeared and they disappeared with the funding. So it turns out that there are not many new uh, uh, think tanks that are emerging in response to COVID. But largely because it's a lot more difficult to work in this kind of context because you have to work from home, you have to telecommute, and where there is infrastructural deficiencies and there is a huge amount of competition for the little funding that is available. It's really difficult for newcomers to play effectively in this space, right? Because even the existing bigger ones are competing for the little funding that is available. So um, there's a lot of struggling going on in the, in the think tank uh, sector at the moment in Nigeria, largely around issues of capacity for, you know, telecommuting, dealing with um, the implications of, of the pandemic. So um, for the future, it's really difficult to tell now how it's going to, how things are going to emerge, but we do foresee a world where after the pandemic is gone, um, it's going to be like a survival of the fittest. So the few uh, or the, the think tanks that manage to go through the challenges that we're facing now, we emerge stronger and possibly more relevant to the policy discourse to the evidence discourse yes. afterwards. Thanks, thanks. This is fascinating. But there's and, and links to you know. Let me jump on some, just add in some of the questions that are coming from 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 the audience on on Slido. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Anybody who's in the audience. Um, um, I mean, two things. And one is the question we are asking the poll that just just came out. So one side, somebody is asking whether typically uh, uh, think tanks collaborate uh, a lot with higher education institutions. Yes. Yeah, so what are the linkages between the, the universities, kind of the formal uh, academic research world and think tanks. But I, I would like to twist a little bit this question to ask whether we, uh, you know, uh, to turn into a question about partnerships, right? So it, it, what are your observations mm -hmm. about the, the willingness or, or the, the tendency to, to, to build partner, to work through partnerships now uh, at this moment of apparently heightened demand for for uh, for research work uh, from from think tanks or heightened excitement uh, about uh, uh, producing evidence that you know somebody needs uh, on the demand side so um, you know how, have you witnessed more collaboration less collaboration uh, think tanks are trying to 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 do it alone um, the other question, which is the one we are asking for the poll, is, is a question about research and, and the quality ultimately of research. So we are asking whether in your countries, uh, to anybody who's, who's part of the session, uh, think tanks uh, by default share the data and, 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 uh, and elaborate on the methodology they use um, to, to generate the evidence. Yeah, it's a big, big question. So, you know, if, if everybody's worried about funding, you know, it's collaboration with actors, including in the higher education sector, uh, as an emerging strategy at all, or is it, you know, uh, I think tanks do it alone. And what does it mean to rely more on think tanks? Um, when, you know, based on whether the sector is, is used to just share data, uh, particularly if it's commissioned work, it's proprietary often, share data or information about the methodology. So I, I don't know who wants to take the, the, the question first. So either collaboration with um, the academic world or, mm -hmm. or um, let's say, the rigor, or at least transparency in the, in the, in the, act, in the data used and, and the methodology for think tanks specifically. Okay. So uh, well, I, I, I can start, if I may. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite straightforward in the Nigerian context. Um, I start with the second one. In general, um, the, the kind of research that emerges from the think tank sector is uh, as transparent as it gets. And 
by that, I mean that you get to see the report, you get a good understanding of the methodologies, but um, more often than not, the, the specific micro data that is behind the evidence you, well, do not really get to see. And as you rightly mentioned, Francesco, that's because in many cases, this is commissioned work where uh, this is proprietary. So this hasn't really changed much despite the pandemic. But in terms of collaboration, two things are happening at the moment. Um, think tanks are beginning to see a greater need to collaborate with the education sector, with the higher education sector. That's largely because a lot of funding initiatives, particularly from international donors, now require multidisciplinary uh, collaborations, especially if it's about if the research is about response to COVID-19 or to pandemics in general. So, I mean, essentially the questions are framed in such a way that they require multidisciplinary teams to respond, and this is quite logical. And then the second thing going on is that in any case, uh, before now, think tanks generally re uh, rely, in some cases, rely on consultants who sometimes are researchers in the higher education sector. So this demand has kind of gone up because of, uh, well, also related to the first point I made about, you know, the need for multidisciplinarity in, in responding to funding opportunities. So this kind of demand has, has risen in recent times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Abidur. Uh, let's maybe move to, um, to, to, to Myanmar. I don't know if uh, Zou, Noah or, or, or Jana was also connected, want to, to pick up on this one. Collaboration. I mean, are we seeing more collaboration, less collaboration, in fact? And now there are uh, big question marks on, on uh, both competence, because it's, we're all working on something that we don't know, really, uh, and, and because funding, uh, the funding kind of scenario is, 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 uh, is very blurred. Um, and of course, you know, transparency in, in, the, in the data used and the methodology kind of um, applied. Who wants to take the question from, May from the Myanmar team? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so please. By May. Yes. Uh, well, in, in our case, I think there's a bit of a mismatch uh, because, you know, on one hand, um, think tanks themselves are working very closely to each other. And as uh, Nguwa just mentioned, that I think uh, we are becoming uh, part of the consortium that try to mobilize the um, indigenous uh, knowledge sharing as well as local uh, inputs uh, to the government. Uh, I think, which is a very positive uh, sign of the, of the moment because uh, in the past, we all were busy with our own projects and at least uh, the pandemic uh, make us unite on the single front. So I think uh, <clears throat> it's a very uh, positive force, I must say. But on the other hand, in terms of uh, collaboration with the government, I think uh, there seems to be a bit of uh, uh, gaps because, you know, um, we, we, we have a one peculiar situation where, you know, most of our think tanks are located uh, in the, in, uh, the, you know, the Pomosh city of Yangon, and then the government sits in the uh, Nidido. So in a way, we still have a lot of travel restrictions and travel ban, and we don't really have a local commercial flights so it is a bit uh, of a physical distance between the government and those in the commercial city. And that's why, you know, the private sector is also felt that they are being, you know, not uh, readily listened by the government. And so they become more energetic in terms of generating uh, kind of an assessment. So um, I think that that's, that's where we need to work out more on how to collaborate with the more official, you know, you know, the owners of the processes, which is the government ministries, uh, as well as some, you know, the donor institutions, because nowadays, you know, the donor institutions are also focusing a lot more on the human Davian side. And then, you know, most of their uh, ongoing, you know, the normal uh, business or usual engagement type on certain policy issues are not really uh, moving ahead. And so I think uh, we are also encouraging uh, both the government and the donor institutions to, you know, uh, to, to accept the reality and then to start uh, utilizing the local think tank so that some of those, uh, you know, the policy pipelines that are being stuck, 
uh, can be reopened and then we can start providing inputs to this process. So I think uh, in a way it's um, like many other countries, we are, we are seeing some opportunities, but at the same time, the challenges are still remain very huge for, for some of us uh, to, to in, in the midst of the pandemic happening. Back to you, Francesco. Yes, can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so yeah. thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, thanks a lot, Zobo. Uh, now let's let's go back to Sharem um, and, and Bolivia. Uh, do you see, you know, in all the opportunities you, you, you mentioned, Sharem, do you see more, more interest in collaboration, let's say? And do you see anything changing in terms of the standards in, you know, for regarding transparency and, and research protocols ultimately. So sharing of data and sharing of methodology. Um. Well, um, I think it's uh, it might be a bit frustrating to explain the situation because even though the pandemic seems to demand for an increased collaboration, I think the opportunities to collaborate are becoming more limited. Um, just because of the characteristics of the social uh, of the research system, um, I'm getting a little bit of return. I don't know from where, <laughs> but um, please, please, please mute the mic, please. Can everybody else mute the mic? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like I was saying. Um, there are opportunities for collaboration um, more uh, now more than ever, but still we have to work on um, on how the dynamics of our system work. Uh, there's still a gap uh, that prevents a, a like a fluent interaction between all the actors. Uh, for example, academic centers that uh, operate within the universities are, are 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 working on their isolated efforts here. But that doesn't mean they're interacting with policymakers or private uh, sectors. Um, private centers are not necessarily um, giving them feedback on their work. So I think that that's something we are um, we need to work on um, from now on. Uh, but in terms of uh, sharing data, I think. Um, we've we've noticed a lot more openness on the institutions to um, to make their research available, and um, because that's what this is all about uh, to feed a debate, to um, inform the population, to inform other institutions about the work you're doing, and you're trying to get them all together on on, on one point. So I think we've noticed those two one that we need to work on still, but there's definitely an openness to. To improve. Thanks a lot. And th this is uh, again very interesting because uh, it links to you know makes me think about another question that somebody asked another, another anonymous um, anonymous participant to the, uh, in the audience um, where they asked are think tanks replacing the role of non higher education research institutions um, and this is interesting because it really depends on you know answering that question really depends on what. Uh, the baseline is ultimately, you know, I mean, are think tanks substituting the role that we think higher education research institutions should be playing or the role that higher education institutions are currently playing. If we look at the report produced by, by the by Nuwaz or Wu and Jana from, from Myanmar, uh, clearly there isn't much being produced in the higher education sector uh, in formal academic settings uh, much research produced at all in fact uh, we had a great we had to go through great trouble to 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 find something to measure when we we're looking at how much research was produced what kind of research was produced and who was who was doing it um, while of course in countries like um, like Nigeria, uh, the situation is, is uh, very, very different. There's so much research that everybody's publishing uh, everywhere all the time, as far as far as the the the, the, the team has found out, uh, with a limited uh, uh, control of quality actually of, of the outlet. 
right? Because uh, not everything can fit in the in the in the most uh, renowned uh, research outlets. So it's, it's an open question. You know, it's interesting to see that everybody seems to point out to to the fact that this is an opportunity, um, the COVID in in a way, because it put up front the need for for producing evidence. Um, it created some opportunities to produce that evidence locally. You know, because it, 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 it took out of the picture the international consultants flying in to, to, to do the research, in, for example, in the case of, of, of Myanmar, um, and in the case of Bolivia, think tanks are themselves kind of being very proactive in, in, in doing work and, and publicizing it. Uh, they see an opportunity um, in this. Uh, but is this opportunity kind of um, a mirage in a way? I mean, this, of course, we, we, we'll only know um, in, in a few years. But let me just go back to the speakers for a kind of one minute closing um, comment um, about the one thing, one thing you, you believe um, could, could turn this opportunity into, into, into a, a real chance to, to strengthen the sector, to strengthen the quality um, or, or of the research produced by think tanks, to strengthen collaboration within think tanks. Um, if, if, if you COVID, the, the current pandemic and the uh, incredible need for evidence and, and, and approaches to, to address in the short term, but also in the long term, the current crisis. Um, what, what is it that could turn beyond the limited funding? Because that <laughs> I think we'll all agree on. Uh, what is the one thing that could really kind of help um, making the most of this opportunity? Yeah. Um, Sharon, do you want to, to, to start and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you back to, to Myanmar and end with, with, uh, with Nigeria? Um, I think uh, the opportunity will, will reflect itself on the post-COVID stage uh, with regards to the level of participation of think tanks on research and policy formulation. Um, I think if uh, I think, as, as, as mentioned on several discussions here and uh, on International Development Bank discussions or around the world, I think positioning think tanks strategically before public, uh, public policymakers and development partners now, I think, could be one of the best outcomes of COVID-19 for think tanks in developing countries. Because if now you are adjusting to the, to the needs of national policymakers in this whole context, it'll be more likely for government agencies to come back to you as a credible institution and increasing their demand for policy research. So I think, um, I think that that is where think tanks are better placed now uh, to move forward in upcoming stages. Thank you, Sharon. So basically, you know, think tanks, Pull it together. Make sure that you 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 show what you can do, and 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 you'll see that um, you know the, it will pay back. It's a bit linked to what I didn't was saying earlier about you know the strongest, uh, the fittest will uh, will will, uh, will will prevail. So strategic communication and positioning, excellent. Uh, take home uh, take home thought. Um, so uh, or or Noir, uh, or Jana, uh, what should happen? What what would make this a real opportunity for 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 strengthening um, the work of think tanks as producer and communicator of research um, in in Myanmar? Yeah, well, it, it it is our strong desire to work with the higher education institutions in Myanmar. Because, Wait, you know, who, yes. Um, go, can you hear? Me? Go ahead, Zou. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to, to answer your questions about the you know working with the higher education institutions, yeah, of course it is our strong a desire to work work out uh, more uh, partnership with the um, higher education institutions because in our country they are more formal institutions which are directly under the control of the Ministry of Education. So in a way, I think uh, this is a kind of a uh, entry point to also uh, influence the government policy making. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, you know, we are still very young at this stage. Because you know uh, we we were just experiencing a huge uh, transition uh, from from the past, where you know the most of the research process are tightly controlled by the government, and then now most of the um, higher education institutions are uh, yet to be more 
uh, robust in terms of their research uh, system. Uh, nonetheless, I think uh, we are now trying to work out some sort of a joint surveys with uh, some universities because, you know, um, one of the biggest issues facing the country is unemployment issues. You know, it's, uh, there was a massive layoff. And then also there's an issue that most of the uh, young graduates uh, freshly coming out of the university, you know, they face a huge challenge in terms of uh, getting a job. And then so we are trying to uh, make a quick survey and then try to find out how they are coping with the situations. And so we will be launching uh, such surveys in the coming months. And so I think that would be a kind of a, um, you know, it's also kind of a public-private partnership because, you know, higher education institutions from the government side is also working with the local think tanks like us, well, with the help from the private sector, uh, you know, the, the chambers are also helping us. And so we want to actually look at uh, where the jobs are uh, being created and uh, how the new employers can also find the, the, the newly entrant um, uh, capable graduates uh, freshly coming out of the universities. But nonetheless, I think um, <clears throat> um, still there's a, there's a kind of a distinctive role that uh, we now are playing, uh, for instance, like uh, our higher education institutions are focusing a bit more on the academic and technical side of the research, whereas the local think tanks are working more on the uh, action research or maybe some sort of a policy research. So we are always uh, active on advocating, advocating and then also uh, building a capacity of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, the, the constituencies and also the, the stakeholders who are involved in the policy processes. So there's a bit of a division of labor, um, but um, hopefully in the, in, the, in the near future, we all can actually uh, merge uh, and then some of the rules can become you know, interchangeable. So, but uh, for now, I think we still are going on a little bit more on the parallel track and then there were some sort of in the in the actions uh, caused by the COVID-19. And so we really love the opportunity to work more with the government institutions. Thank you, you Francis. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you very much. So Abidun or um, Abidayo, you have the, the last words before we, we move to the to the closing. Um, how, what, you know, how to make this to turn this into a natural opportunity over the, at least the medium term, if not the long term for think tanks? Yeah. Um, in well, in, in, in addition to um, issues of, you know, trying to stand out, um, quite uh, strikingly, what comes out as um, a kind of low hanging fruit for think tanks in Nigeria to turn these challenges as we see them into opportunities is identifying the most critical questions and doing research that could immediately answer some of these questions. So for example, I did mention in one of my interventions that recently the government started thinking about reducing the cost of governance. And one of the ways they have been trying to go about this is to reduce the number of organizations in the entire bureaucratic system. So trying to reduce the number of organizations in the federal civil service. So um, there is uh, a huge need for evidence in that respect in terms of how could this be done in the most effective and most efficient manner such that the, it will not create you know, bigger problems than what it aims to solve. So I do believe very strongly how an immediately applicable evidence emerges from the think tank sector in this regard. It's, um, oh, okay. So uh, I yes, don't know. We, it looks we, like we I went a off. Few, a, few, a few words. Uh, if I understand well uh, what you said, you're, you're basically telling think tanks to, to, to be brave about setting their own agenda uh, and, and generating high quality work. Right? Yeah? So. Yes. Exactly. That, that is immediately relevant to topical policy discussions. So I was given yes. the example of the need to reduce the cost of governance by cutting um, 
the bureaucratic okay. system. So, uh, yeah, this is fascinating because basically what you're saying is that there is an opportunity, but you know, think tanks should really be, be entre entrepreneurs of of, um, of their own success. Yeah, I think, uh, we heard uh, from sharing yeah. about uh, positioning, Absolutely. particularly vis-a-vis -vis international donors, because we know that there is not much funding in Bolivia for social sciences domestically. Right, so that is the the priority. Uh, we heard, of course, from Zou about uh, the opportunity to work with governments because you know the government needs uh, plenty of help now, and, and you know that there, there could be a window. Um, and Abidun is telling us as well with government, uh, but you know pushing um, pushing a little bit the, the the kind of the independence and and the, the originality of the agendas that one one pursues, right? To to show that you know, you know to show what matters. Yeah. So to prove one's value by 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 setting um, um, by setting uh, the agenda. Um, so thanks everyone. I think this is just the beginning. Of course, uh, the starting point of a, of a, of a, of a you know much a discussion which could be much much uh, longer. And that of course deserves many many more voices. Uh, of course, more research. You know, there's always a call for more research at the end of our discussion with researchers, <laughs> and, and, and a number of course of, of other spaces. Um, specific debate. Debate. So thank, thank, uh, thank you to all um, and each one of you who participated. Um, I just wanted to close this by making um, a few announcements. Um, of course, I, I think I can say on behalf of everyone, um, everybody is happy to take the conversation forward over, over email, etc. So please free. Um, to contact us, we, I mean, I'll be happy to put you in touch with with um, with all our speakers um, today. Um, just a few quick announcements before before we close. Um, for those who are interested, uh, the the doing research assessment on the MR, uh, the full report is is now um, available on on the GDM website. We launched it in a, in a webinar a couple of weeks ago, and, and now the full report in English is available. We're working on the translation. So visit the GDM website. Uh, and we'll put the link in the in the chat for those who want to to access it. Um, of course, the other the other webinars are coming soon, and we have a webinar to launch the um, to launch the Indonesia report. Unfortunately, the Indonesian team couldn't couldn't join us um, couldn't join us today. Uh, but there'll be another webinar on July fourteenth um, on, on to launch the the, the report on. Um, on Indonesia. Um, also, one one quick mention about some work we're starting in Venezuela with IDRC. So we are starting some work in Venezuela, one of the most deinstitutionalized settings um, on the planet, particularly when it comes to research and research institutions. Uh, so we, we are starting work in terms of understanding uh, how the deinstitutionalization of research uh, affects uh, across higher education and, and, and of course, think tanks and and NGOs, etc., affects the capacity of the system to to, to produce um, research. And again, this you know the, the do research program is is almost a pretext to 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 bring to the fore to the international scene strong local research institutions who want to set their own agenda on 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 research systems. Um, the do research assessments uh, is what we do with them. It's just the first step. Of their own, their own kind of agenda setting on, on the topic. Um, so please keep an eye on all the speakers you have heard today, uh, and on, of course now you can reach them through our work on, on DR and their own websites uh, to know where, where this conversation is is um, is going next. Um, finally, a big thank to the On Think Tanks team. For hosting, um, for hosting this panel, and for managing incredibly effectively uh, uh, the annual avatar, as it were, of, of our annual conference, uh, which I hope all of us will have a chance to attend uh, physically, face to face, in, in 2021. Um, of course, it's always a pleasure to work um, on, with on think tanks and, and its amazing team. Um, for any question, don't hesitate to contact us at doing research at gdn.int. Uh, you'll find the email address in the chat and, and on our website. And finally, have a good day. And thanks again to all the speakers.